Congressman Armstrong, thanks so much for joining. Let's start with the big announcement yesterday. Speaker Pelosi announces an impeachment inquiry. Your reaction, sir? Well, my reaction is it makes a good headline, but until they file articles and 218 people on the floor of the House vote for it, nothing has really changed. I mean, it's this this um, quasi-fake impeachment inquiry, but the impeachment inquiries start when they have 218 members vote. So, like I said, it so, makes a great headline, but nothing changed. And that's my question for you. Like, what was the purpose? And I've got a point in my question is the fact that you had President Trump stand up yesterday I thought give an incredibly powerful speech in front of the UN General Assembly. I mean, touched on China, Iran, immigration, and religious freedom. And to me, it was no mistake, just hours later, Nancy Pelosi hadn't seen a transcript, hasn't talked to the whistleblower, and makes this announcement. Poke holes in that theory one and two. If my theory's wrong, then what's the purpose of what she did yesterday? Well, I, I think I've told you and I've told other people from the time I got here, the answer isn't if, it's when. I mean, this was always coming. <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, this had, I mean, this was always coming. They have an insatiable boop, boop. need to feed their base. They don't have a choice. Um, we've been preparing like that forever. But the point is, is, I mean, you don't always like to have process fights, Chris, but on something as grave as this, process really does matter. I mean, you ha I mean, if, if they're going to move down a formal impeachment proceeding, then they should do a formal impeachment proceeding. And anything else is just political gamesmanship. You know, you bring up a great point about what it means from a process. And, and, and you know, when I had a chance to process this last night myself, Congressman, is that I really got concerned about our country. I mean, if you get into this impeachment conversation and, and something bizarre ends up happening between President Trump getting elected or not and whatnot. I mean, what kind of damage do you foresee this potentially doing to the fabric of our nation? Well, I'll even go more short term. There was real momentum here to get USMCA passed. There was real momentum to do something with prescription drug pricing, real momentum to do something with surprise billing as we end through the end of this calendar year. Those are all things that are incredibly important to North Dakotans. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm still a glass half full guy, so I'm hopeful we can still continue down those conversations. But I can tell you this isn't going to help. Because the, I mean... Chair Chairman Peterson from the House Ag Committee came on the show today, Chris. I think the USMCA is going to get done in the next 30 to 60 days. Does that time timeline still seem viable to you? I sure hope so, because it's incredibly important. But I mean, this is—I mean, it, it, this this is the type of thing that consumes this town. And it, it, you've got six different committees now that are going to be feeding stuff to the Judiciary Committee instead of doing the work of the American people. It, this is a really—I mean, outside of the fact that it's—I mean, they're not following House rules. They're—they're they're doing this in some way that, it, like I said, is a political motivation more than actually the process of going through. But it's also going to affect getting the business done. I mean, we're in a divided government. Get Getting results is is tough enough as it is. Now we're going to have this hanging over everybody, and not just the Judiciary Committee, but the other six committees. You mentioned how it consumes that city. Obviously, we are a long ways away from the D.C. swamp here in North Dakota and Minnesota. And when you watch the news, it was like your colleagues on the other side of the aisle seemed almost gleeful at this announcement. What, what are you hearing from them? What do you? What's the kind of feedback you're getting from your colleagues on both sides of the aisle about the impeachment inquiry announcement? Yeah, you know, I spent the morning mostly with Dusty Johnson from South Dakota, and then we've been in meetings, but I mean, I, we're just kind of under the same frustration. I mean, you know, I just was on the floor arguing to get, just today, to get rid of the backlog on rape kits. I mean, these are things that really affect people, and it's when, when things like this consume the town, we have less chance of getting things done that our constituents care about. And it's, you, you know, we're, we're out here, so... Everything begins and ends with politics in D.C., so we have to recognize that. But at the same time, we really just, I mean, we need to, we need to prove that Congress can still work, and I don't think this is helpful. What's amazing is you're going to be in the belly of this beast, or beast sir, being part of the Judiciary Committee. One of your colleagues, Representative Lance Gooden, has asked that uh, the chairman of the Judiciary, Chairman Nadler, be removed, he says, because he's breaking the law. Do you agree with your colleague, Representative Gooden? Yeah, I don't think he's breaking the law, but he's definitely breaking House rules. I mean, they're making things up as they go along. They're allowing unelected trial lawyers a half hour of questioning. And as, mem as duly elected members of Congress, we get five minutes of questioning. If I was a lawyer on the other side of the aisle, I'd be embarrassed. Um, I mean, this, the committee's made up of really talented lawyers. And more importantly, that's not going to help bring witnesses in. I mean, if you're a witness coming into that hearing and you don't have any of the legal protections and you have, I mean, they call them Democratic staffers, but they're, I mean, 
they are absolutely hired guns, top shelf trial attorneys and disagree with their politics all you want, but they're really good at what they do. And these witnesses don't even get the protections of a courtroom anymore. But most importantly, they weren't elected by anybody. Not their district, not my district, not the people of North Dakota, not the people of Minnesota, not the people of South Dakota. And so if we're going to have these types of hearings, then the least we could do is allow the elected members of Congress to, to deal with them. So yeah, Jerry, Chairman Nadler is breaking the rules and it's, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty upsetting that, that he's doing it that way. Do you think Speaker Pelosi did this simply because she knows they can't beat Donald Trump at the ballot box? I, he, I'm not in their strategy okay. sessions and how they are dealing with that. I, I, I mean, I, me, I, think, I think this train was, st I mean, this started the day after President Trump got elected, and I don't think there was any way to put this genie back in the bottle. Let me ask you this. We've gone through the Russian hoax. You had a chance to question uh, Special Counsel Bob Mueller. Now, they've, now President Trump has released his conversation, the phone call between himself and the President of Ukraine. I'm assuming you've read the transcript. Sure, your reaction to it. My, my reaction is, is I, I, I mean, I've read the whole thing. I, I, I've dealt with it. I think, I think this is a perfect example of why everybody's like, release everything immediately, release everything immediately. I think the president was always willing to release this transcript. I've read the transcript. I don't think it's nearly what they, protect, what they say it is. And you can tell. Chairman Schiff has already been saying it doesn't matter if there wasn't anything in it because it was implicit. But I think the, the real issue we've got to be concerned about here is there were some things said in that conversation that I'm not sure other, other world leaders are going to find all that flattering so there are real reasons why you don't release these things and i think it sets a dangerous president precedent that being said i'm glad he released it so every single person in the country can read it for themselves i want to get into the call in a moment but you bring up a great point sir how much does this release of a transcript impact potentially our national security knowing how it could potentially impact conversations in the future well, and I think that's the issue and how it does affect those things. But I mean, people are going to be way less cordial to talk to each other if they know that under any kind of um, partisan gamesmanship that we're playing in this town, those conversations, you'd be less likely to talk frankly with somebody. And that's important when you're the leader of the free world talking to other leaders across the world. And to be fair, President Trump did get signed off by the president of Ukraine to release this. So that, there is that caveat or that variable there as well. Let's talk about the call itself. You, you are uh, inferring that, hey, Chris, there's really nothing there. So I'm reading you saying, hey, Chris, I don't think it's a big deal that the president of the United States asked the attorney general of the United States to work with another country to investigate a political opponent. Is that a fair assessment on my part? Well, no, I think it's saying that investigating a corruption in Ukraine that affected the United States is, is absolutely free game. I mean, if we're, we do this, we've done this on other issues. If it, I mean, if there's purely political motivation, we need to have a conversation about that and we need to move forward. And that is, I mean, that is something we have to have. But I don't think that's what it was. They're talking about corruption that was occurring in the Ukraine in a broader spectrum of the conversation. Let's be frank, too. The president didn't bring up Rudy Giuliani until the Ukrainian president brought him up. So, I mean, this conversation evolved. I've read the whole transcript they're talking about corruption that is occurring on both sides both both in the ukraine and the united states and i mean we're going to have these conversations about election security and corruption we should have them everywhere and not just where it's convenient for democrats well, thank you so much to congressman armstrong for his time today obviously a lot going on in his world and there is a lot more to that conversation with congressman armstrong so if you want to see more of that conversation just simply go to our Facebook page. It's very easy to do. Go to facebook.com forward slash POV now. You can watch that conversation in its entirety there.